Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode we get to take a quick look at one of my most favorite used features inside of Adobe Bridge CS5. And it's actually a feature, I use it more like a utility for batch renaming files. Now anyone who's watched my podcast in the past know that I, as a photographer I'm a Lightroom user but there is one feature that I use all the time in Bridge, even if I'm using Lightroom to manage my photos for everything else. And again, that's the batch renaming feature. So let me explain what happened here. So I import my photos uh, into Lightroom, do all my editing, sorting, managing, retouching in Photoshop, and then when I'm done, I export out the client's photos for web and for print. So I would normally have two different folders containing one being high res, one being low res. So I have the print folder here for a client and I want to show you what happens uh, when you uh, look in this folder you'll see that the, the images are there but if you look at the file names the file names automatically get the word edit added to them when you do a round trip into Photoshop from Lightroom. So you open up the image in Photoshop once you're in Lightroom and you do any changes to it when you save it it goes back to Lightroom but it always puts this word edit on the end of it now uh, speaking of that how did it get the rest of the name how did it get the Amanda name on on the uh, beginning of it well I did that upon import and even if you're not a Lightroom user you can do that in bridge so for example there is a get photos from camera command which will of course work with your uh, camera over USB or a card reader so when you do your get photos to drop them into a folder, you have the option of renaming the files upon import. So you don't have to use those generic camera names and numbers. You can have them renamed and even my favorite option, convert to DNG if you're working in raw, or shooting in RAW. So those are the things I would do um, if I were using Bridge to bring in my photos and that would give me a leg up on the file name. So I'd have the file name and a sequence number but again, uh, once I go into Photoshop and save it back, and at least working with Lightroom, it's going to always put this word edit on the end of it. So before CS5, I used to painstakingly go in, in the operating system, in the finder, select the word edit, and either take it out or change it to the word print. And that, by the way, I do use the word print for the high res and I use the word web for the low res ones so that way the client will know the difference as to which ones are which. However, um, I don't want to have to do that manual step anymore. It'd be great if Lightroom or Bridge, in this case, we're going to use Bridge, that could do it for me after the fact. Now, I do want to point out a tip here. If you are looking at a folder of images and you just want to name them different names for each image, when you click twice, like once to select the image and then once again, notice it highlights the name and it will um, stop short of the file extension. So that means you can start typing. We can call this Amanda. And I'll, by the way, I'll put the edit back in so we can fix that later. And when I hit tab, here's your tip. It'll go to the next photo and it'll automatically highlight the name. So therefore, it's gone ahead and put the um, selection, it's changed the name, which by the way, I resorted it uh, in my sort order, so that's why I moved it. But it's gone ahead and put the, uh, the selection on the next photo, already highlighting the name. So you can type, tab, type, tab, type, tab, to go to each photo and name them individually if you want to. So that is a, uh, and by the way, it is actually renaming the file. So there is no undo, there is no way back. I'd have to manually go back now and change that name to what it used to be, which if I remember correctly, I think that was number 51. And let's just go ahead and put that in real quick. We'll make that one. Well, if, it's, if it wasn't 51, it's going to be 51 now. All right, so I've got the names. Again, the way they came out of Lightroom and Photoshop. Now I want to take out the word edit and replace it with the word print. And that is our tip for the day. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of the images. I select the first one, hold down the shift key, select the uh, last one. Uh, you can deselect or uh, select discontinu discontinuous selections. On the Mac, you'd hold down your command key 
and on Windows I believe it would be your control key to select individual photos instead of a whole range. But in this case I do want them all, so I'll select all the photos. I could also do a select all command. Now that I got the photos all selected, I'll go up to my tools menu, I'll come down to batch rename. When I do a batch rename, it brings up this by default. So it always wants to do this, uh, name it project, use the date created, it's pulling that off the metadata, it'll do an underscore, and then it'll start numbering, numbering them with a four digit number, number one. And as you can see at the bottom, if I let it go, that's what it's going to rename all these photos to. And of course, I don't want that. So let's go ahead and start taking out some of these things we know we don't need. We know we don't need the, um, the, uh, the, the date. We know we don't need that underscore. I don't even need this, this number. And you know what? I'm not even going to change the name. The name is fine. I like the Amanda name that's on them. There is one new thing that I want to do, and that is if I go to the pop-up menu here, there is a new command in Bridge CS5 called String Substitution. And I have to thank the en engineer that made this possible because this is exactly what I needed to be able to do. So what this string substitution allows me to do is type in the part of the file name that I want to change and replace it with just the part that I want to replace it with. So I want to find anywhere that it says the word edit and replace it with the word print just that easily. And you can see here at the bottom, it's going to do exactly that. It's going to change all the words that say edit to print, leaving the rest of the file name and extensions alone. And again, that's the beauty of it. Now, there's also a new button here called Preview. We click that. It'll show you what each file is going to be renamed. So if you're doing a bunch of files and you kind of want to make sure it's going to do it right, you can check the preview first. And there's even an export to CSV, which is a comma delimited file. So you can open that up in a word processor or a spreadsheet. So you have a, a, a physical record of what the file names used to be and what they got changed to. So great new options. Now, of course, you can rename them in the same folder. You can move them to a different folder or copy them. So it will leave the originals and the original names alone and make a new copy with the new names into a folder of your choice. So this is exactly what I want to do, and you know what? I do this all the time. So there's a new option in CS5 to let it be a preset. I'm going to go ahead and make this a preset. I'm just going to call it Edit to Print because that's what it is. So now the next time, I won't even have to come in and take all those things out or put new ones back in. I'll just switch to my Edit to Print preset, and it will set all this up for me. Now we'll just go ahead and say Rename, and again, it's so fast. It just happens. That was it. It's done. It's renamed all the edits to prints in my folder. And I'm so happy because that's exactly what I needed to do. So that's it for this episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White. Thanks for watching.